What do we want in our institutions? The development of competencies, of the mastery of technological gadgets, or is it the development of a whole technological culture? These are the key questions that we should be asking. The reason why we ask these questions is because we know the world is in turmoil and also that technology is in turmoil. Fortunately, there is a framework to be able to understand technology. This framework was provided by the Tufflers, by Alvin and Haiti Tuffler. And they asked that we look at technology through the lens of conflict, change, and uncertainty. This framework provided by the Tufflers will permit us to understand the different issues and the different topics that come up related to technology in our fields. This framework enables us to understand why many new jobs that imply the use of technology are emphasizing skills and not necessarily the college degree. The college degree which is the basis of what we do in our universities today. We should be looking at what the experts say and if we look at what Thomas Friedman said recently, digital globalization has created a world where every decent job demands more skills and more lifelong learning. And it should be noted that he is saying more skills when our universities are lowering the credit hour for our programs and asking for more lifelong learning when many of our institutions within the universities do not communicate well such as continuing education and those that are, that are creating MOOCs or massive open online courses. These massive open online courses are disrupting their own universities as they are disrupting the rest of the universities on a global scale. The university setting is changing and we must learn how to deal with this change. A clear example of the need for change it can be seen with the company Volvo, which is getting out of the internal combustion engine altogether and is working towards all electric cars. They are seeing that the electric car is the future of the automotive industry. They're seeing that the electric car will provide for the establishment of non-driving or driverless cars and what Volvo wants to do is establish itself as a leader even though at present the electric car is an incredibly small segment of the automotive industry but they're willing to take the risk they are willing to be leaders of something in the future Let's look at what the future holds for us in terms of the fusion of cars and electric watches. of electric cars is not new. In fact, we saw this in a film uh, from the 1990s. Hello, I'm Johnny Cat. Where can I take you tonight? Drive! Drive! Would you please repeat the destination? Oh, anywhere, just go! Go! Please state a street and number. Shit! Shit! I'm not familiar with that address. Would you please repeat that? <laughs> to understand the essence of the conflict, change, and uncertainty that we're seeing in technology, we should be looking at 
the Intel chip. Today's chip has 37.5 million transistors. The, but the curious thing is that by next year, these chips will have 100 million transistors, which will permit the upsurge in much more artificial intelligence in items that are much, much closer to us personally and in our homes and in our offices. The mere fact that this hard drive, a 20 megabyte hard drive from the 60s and 70s, looks almost ridiculous to us when we have gigabyte USBs in our pocket, just goes to show how much IT and IT power has gone in, in recent years. But to understand technologies, it is important to understand innovation theory. And I'd like to explain briefly innovation theory as proposed by Clayton Christensen. What he proposes is that technology is constantly developing, technology is constantly on the move. Nonetheless, there are tendencies that take technological change off to new paths as we're seeing in the path on the right. Those paths, many a time, disappear because they fail, but at other times they become dominant and what was dominant before now becomes obsolete. So innovation is constantly changing and we have to watch those changes that take on new roots because even though they may fail, some will succeed and will become dominant technologies in the future. To understand this concept, let's look at this example of photographic film. These cartridges were an example of the constant change and development in photography. And though they constantly changed, a new technology appeared, digital photography, which in the beginning was expensive, which in the beginning had uh, clarity problems. But eventually the price went down of digital photography and the quality went up to the point where that new technology surpassed and replaced this technology and where now photographic cartridges are now obsolete and are technology associated with photography's past. Let's take another example, carbon paper. Carbon paper was constantly being improved before it was smudgy, it would leave smudges on your fingers, and you could only copy a few sheets. With improvements, the smudges would disappeared on your fingers, one, and more paper was able to be copied, up to four, five, six copies of paper was able to be copied using carbon paper. But a new technology appeared, photocopiers, where this particular model was able to produce seven copies a minute and this replaced the carbon paper. To understand the uncertainties involved with technology, let's say you wanted to invest your money in a new technology. Let's also say you're in 1977. And let's say you consulted with Ken Olson from the Digital Equipment Corporation, which was a very respected IT company. And you asked Ken Olson where you should be investing your money because you received some offers from companies like Microsoft and um, from Apple. Ken would say to not believe in uh, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates because there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. So you would not invest in Microsoft or in Apple. Let's look at technological change from another perspective. Let's look at it from the mobile platforms. As we know, the dominant players are 
Apple with the iPhone and Google with the Android. On the other hand, we have companies such as Amazon, Facebook and Microsoft which are IT powerhouses and the question is will they remain on the sidelines and will they remain outside of the world of mobile communications? The answer is no. What we're seeing now is this theory of innovation acting out. On the one hand you will find uh, those technologies associated with uh, cellular communications, those uh, dominated by Google, those dominated by, by Apple, they will be undergoing incredible improvements. But on the other hand, you'll find other sources of innovation going outside the norm of today and they hope to become the dominant technology of the future. Apple is hoping to better the cellular communications with augmented reality. They're trying to better their technology with new ways of interacting between the device and the owner. But companies such as Microsoft want to take your communications needs to a different place. Okay, you probably have a smart device, a handheld computer that can run apps, connect to Wi-Fi and other devices, and take pictures and video. So what are smart glasses? Well, like many smart devices, they have a display, audio output, built-in camera, and microphone, even GPS. And they can access the internet using built-in Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth connection to your internet-connected smartphone. They even have their own operating system, so you can download and run most apps directly in your smart glasses. So how are smart glasses different? Well, they're not handheld. You wear them. The display rests right in front of your eyes, so you don't have to look down. Information is right in your field of view. Next, not only can they record HD video and photos, they can also recognize objects and gestures. And with a microphone, they recognize an array of voice commands. The upshot, the power of a smart device, hands-free and compatible with your favorite apps. Get directions, scan barcodes and find the product online, stream video from remote cameras. Smart glasses can even connect to your smartphone via Bluetooth for hands-free phone calls and notifications delivered without needing to pick up your phone. Your digital world, hands-free. I'm Paul Hockman for Amazon.com. Google is teaming up with others to develop Tango. Again, new technologies that surpass what we're having today. Not only are the big players interested in dominating the field, you also have startups and new companies that are interested in dominating the field. Let's look at what Magic Leap is providing for the future. 
Magic Leap's technology is built around dynamic digitalized light field signal, which can merge realistic computer graphics with what the user sees in the real world. Magic Leap's technology is reportedly built around something called a dynamic digitalized light field signal, which can merge realistic computer graphics with what the user sees in the real world. Augmented reality, basically, but the New York Times says it's more accurate than most. Magic Leap is better coordinated with how the human eye and brain process images, making the computer graphics feel and move more naturally. Recode says it involves a wearable projector that will track the user's eye. Examples of augmented reality are being seen in films today, such as the ones by Iron Man and Spider-Man. But other companies are investing in augmented reality because it, it presents the future of their products, such as the electric car again. If you have to wait, you can possibly see a film through your windshield or if your car is driverless, you can see a movie as you're being transported from one point to another. Innovation theory shows us that we have to watch all products. And when we look at the Alexa and Echo products from Amazon, which are being advertised as uh, home assistants, we know that shortly they will be introduced as office assistants and once they become office assistants today's companies will be changed dramatically in terms of their operations and their personnel if we look at healthcare we know that patients are being treated with computers next to them where data is inputted checklists are being uh, confronted with the patient's conditions and soon these computers will be operated in the home nurses and doctors will be in remote places and hospitals will be closing down as more home care will be on the rise innovation theory has shown us how technologies transform as this horsed carriage, this carriage that was that uh, that needed horses, was transformed into a horseless carriage where the motor was put beneath it, but nonetheless they had the same structure. Eventually, the horseless carriage evolved into the cars as we know them today. But technology 
takes on the form of the techno of the dominant technology until it transforms itself into something radically different. This principle we will see in the university sector. Today's universities, which were created for conditions of the 20th century, must be transformed in order to conform to the characteristics of the 21st century. Innovation theory tells us that distance education associated with the 21st century will have characteristics initially of the 20th century and of face-to-face -face education, but eventually it will evolve. Let's see how a distance education can transform the whole environment of university education. Distance learning courses are a useful, accessible and affordable way to gain a nationally recognised and respected qualification. There are a range of benefits for taking a distance learning qualification, including Flexibility With distance learning courses, students can complete the course anywhere, anytime and at their own pace making learning more convenient for those with a busy lifestyle. Low cost. Online courses are generally less expensive than other further education courses, making learning more accessible to everyone. Learn while you work. Students can complete distance learning courses whilst working part or full time, since they can choose when they wish to study. Working while studying offers a steady income, stability and allows students to build up experience. Stay interested. With innovative, interactive resources, distance learning offers an engaging alternative to traditional learning methods. The Skills Network uses video content, interactive games and challenges to motivate students through their course. Over the last few years, the popularity of distance learning courses has grown remarkably. The Skills Network has met this demand by expanding its range of online distance learning courses for students wishing to gain new skills and improve their knowledge. Online distance learning platforms have taken great strides in enhancing learner experience. The Skills Network's online learning platform, Equal, is dedicated to providing engaging, exciting and informative resources that will help students learn and progress in their career. It's easy to enrol in one of our courses Simply search for a course in the Courses section on our website. Pay online using one of our payment options and receive your login details within 48 hours of payment. Or, if you are a paper-based learner, a member of the Skills Network will contact you to send your course out via the post. Then, all you need to do is work your way through the course with a dedicated remote tutor and customer service advisor on hand. And once the course is completed, you will be issued with your certificate. To learn more about the Skills Network and what we can offer, visit our website www.theskillsnetwork.com To attract and serve distance education students, the university must transform itself because these students are different. Distance education students do not want to be isolated, they want to be part of a community. They will be very selective in terms of the institutions where they study, and they will be very critical of the experiences that are offered in these distance education programs. Also, they have an interest in competency-based education, the trend of the future. Competency-based education is a movement with varying characteristics. It's important for the institution to select where it is in this movement. Models vary from programs that are very similar to traditional education and there are those competency-based programs which almost eliminate the institution of the university as we know it today. Whatever the model, competencies have to be carefully selected and the best way to do it is with the collaboration of industry and society. And we should take into consideration the computing power that we have so that we can use databases to personalize the educational experience of students, which is very possible, which can easily be done if 
we take this into consideration seriously. Online competency-based education requires a new type of assessment, a new type of proving that students have achieved mastery of the competencies that we have established. Definitely, education in the 21st century is a difficult endeavor. It is a competition in massive proportions where the rules are changing and the finishing line is changing constantly. It is important to track changes and it is important to innovate. But most of all, we must innovate. We must take risks just to survive.